November 9th, heading into Fargo, Illinois, which is kind of a suburb of Chicago here, to, to pick up a load. It rained earlier this morning, and it looks like it's going to clear up, though. It'll be a bit of a decent day anyway, so we'll, we'll see if we can't get loaded out of this out of this terminal and get back on the highway again. Most of the terminals that we load at are um, restricted secure areas uh, because of the nature of the material that we that we haul. So uh, as a result, the cameras aren't allowed inside the facilities, so I can't I can't film anything in there for you, but I can certainly film the film the drive on route and see if the the brake check team stops us up in the Bolingbrook scale up here this morning. See how that goes. I, not that I'm complaining, but I, I really haven't seen a whole lot of activity at the scales from uh, brake check week here. I came up yesterday from Indianapolis. I've been to Joliet, Illinois, and went by that southbound scale on 65. And they were locked up, and so was the so was the one on I-80 going west. So I don't know, but I the eastbound one in in Illinois apparently had been working fairly hard. So maybe they've they've concentrated their manpower over there yesterday. We'll see what we uh, encounter today. I spent the, the, the night last night at. Uh, Morris, Illinois, and the TA, one of my favorite truck stops. I, I use their shop to get work done on my truck fairly often, and uh, whenever I'm in the area, and, and the restaurant there is is second to none. It's uh, it's excellent. If I've got any any complaints at all about that truck stop, it's pretty minor. I wish they had more parking because a great truck stop always can use more parking. And I wish they had a few more showers. I think they've only got five showers there, so they can certainly use a few more of those. But that's a, that's a, a regular stopping spot for me when I'm I'm in the area of Morris, Illinois. Anyway, one of my favorite truck stops. persist. It's running hot. Hotter than I like to see anyway. And I think I figured out what the problem is. I'm going to go home and, and check my uh, my invoices from a few years ago now and see if uh, the shop that replaced my turbo, replaced the original turbo, didn't record the, uh, the model of the turbo that I've had for the last three or four years here, the one I was so happy with. I, and I'm thinking it was a different model turbo than the one that uh, Peterbilt has installed for me here recently. And I'm thinking that's why there's such a drastic performance difference. I, I think maybe Pete put on the turbo that was correct to the serial number of the, of the, uh, the build sheet for the truck, but they didn't uh, replace the turbo the same one that was on the motor already and I think that's maybe the problem here so of course I'll have to get home to, to do that and look through my my work orders but I've, I've saved them all right from when this truck was new in 2004 so I, I know I'll have the invoice and I know the year I did it so hopefully the, the invoice will will show that uh, model number of the turbo. to Peterbilt about this turbo and of course they don't want to exchange it for a different one because now they they consider it a used turbo so they're a little more concerned I think with not having a used turbo on their shelf than with satisfying the customer here so I don't know it's the peat shop that I used was 
uh, has a good reputation, but they're not the one I bought the truck. And so maybe their their customer service only extends so far, but I'll dig into that a little deeper when I get back home. I did a pre-check on the on the trailer and truck this morning, but I did it in the dark because I needed to be down here for an early morning appointment, so I always prefer to do that stuff in the daylight when I can. Time doesn't always permit. I might, if I get a chance here after I get loaded, stop and Gary or someplace like that, Gary, Indiana, and have a look at it in the daylight just to make sure we're good.
guys are on the back. Looks like they're doing a healthy business. There's lots of junk that runs in and out of Chicago, just like every major city, I'm sure. So, good place to have a set of scales. Look at this guy. This five time just smoking away to beat the band going west there. Of course, he didn't go into the scale. We just drove right on by. I hope they go after him. Now, there goes the container guy. He likes that building. Sometimes, well, a lot of the time, really, the middle lane is safer for us in big trucks because the four-wheelers don't know how to merge correctly, and they'll just come sailing off the ramps, cut right in front of you, not leave you enough time to stop. So I can kind of understand in an area like this why he's moved to the middle. I might end up doing that too if I have, I have enough trouble with the four-wheelers up here on these ramps. There's the weather tech building right there on the, on the left. This guy waits till the last minute before he changes lanes, cuts in front of me, and hits his brake so he can get to the ramp here. Four-wheelers don't mind putting trucks in a jam, or you know, a lot of them never even realize that they do. They just, they'll just pull in front of you and stop. Four-wheelers drastically need a better driver education than, than what they have. There should be, I feel, there should be a program on, particularly on how to drive around big trucks. I think that's sadly needed. 